Hi everyone, thank you for uh, joining us today for this uh, webinar on respite, uh, short breaks from caregiving. Uh, my name is Deb Peterman and I am with the Center for Disability Empowerment. I am a transition, uh, I don't, what am I, <laughs> transition coordinator and a community connector. Um, I'm also a sibling uh, who, to a man who uh, I always say, um, he never spoke a word in his life, but his life speaks volumes. Um, I've been connected with the disability community when he was diagnosed at the age of four. And this is uh, 59 years later. So anyway, tonight I'm looking forward to this, this topic on respite and just sharing ideas on how we can support people and just let it kind of like be a popcorn thing. But there are some things I need to do first and that will be to share my screen and talk to you about uh, what we're going to look at tonight. And now it's gonna misbehave on me. Okay, Christina, it is, oh, here it goes. Doesn't want to go there. Okay, we'll just watch the whole thing. <laughs> anyway, so tonight's re uh, respite roundtable is a time to share tried and true ideas of short respite breaks for families with disabilities. I would like to ask if you would do a quick poll and uh, see who's here with us. If you just come on, would you be willing to uh, do this quick poll for us? Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look at what's going on here. the results. So we have people who are currently in caregiving position. What is your idea of respite? Uh, no one fell for my spending the afternoon on an inner tube with a lazy river. But I think that would be my um, idea of heaven. <laughs> uh, doing something I've always wanted to do just for me and just need time and space to think. All right, let's stop. I did it. Hi, Barb. Nice to join, see you joining us. Yeah, I'm gonna talk, be talking about you a little bit. Uh -oh. um, Christine, I have a question. I'm having issues with um, getting the slideshow to move. Yeah, you're doing everything the right way. I don't know why it's not going. Okay, all right, let's just continue. All right, so uh, again, I'm, I'm with the Center for Disability Empowerment. Uh, we are a non-residential uh, center for independent living. And um, uh, so what you'll see here are different logos for tonight's program. We are currently uh, working a grant from the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities. Uh, the grant is called Ohio Family Network. And uh, we are also working with the Chart of the Life course uh, program and um, and then tonight uh, we'll have Christina team in with the Ashland Special Needs Ministry. So this is kind of a joint effort here. But first, I want to tell you what we do at the Center for Disability Empowerment. Uh, we are, like I said, a, a, a non-residential center for independent living that is driven by choice and direction of people with disabilities. Our mission at CDE is to provide support and resources for people with disabilities in order for them to be participants 
and contributors to uh, in their communities as they live, learn, work, worship, play alongside people without disabilities. Tonight, I've asked uh, Christina Teven to kind of come on board and help us with this little uh, roundtable we are having. Um, Christina is a, the executive director with the Ashland Special Needs Ministry. And there you see her lovely smile, and we will see her in a little bit. Um, so I wanted to put up this slide. Um, you know, I, I kept this, uh, this, this picture here. Never forget who helped you out while everyone else was making excuses. And, you know, for me, um, I remember when people um, came along my family. You know, watched my brother so my parents could come to an activity. Um, stayed at home with him so they could go to church. So those are things, as a sibling, I never forget. And um, so we were always grateful when someone um, takes the time to think, how can I help somebody in a very simple way? So tonight we have Charter the Life course. And these are the tools. And I'm going to just go ahead and start to, should have a little slideshow going with this, but it's not happening. I'm just going to spell it out. So in the beginning here, we see the person. Um, we, we talk about person-centered uh, planning and a focus on a person and what they think will be a good life. And most of our people have family surrounding them or support people surrounding them. So as we look around outside the circle here, this is a holistic focus across the domains. So these are in consideration as we are helping a person towards a good life. So we, we include advocacy and engagement, uh, daily life and employment, social and spirituality, safety and security, community living and healthy living. So we see this little thing right around here. That's what I just talked about. And then we talk about the three buckets of support. Those are um, discovery and navigation, is finding out what's out there and um, how we can encourage each other with new connections, uh, networking. And then we have uh, connecting and networking, which is, um, you know, what Christina and I are doing tonight. Uh, we are networking and working together um, to support families with disability. And then we have goods and services. So when we look at these pictures here, um, this is like a typical family right here, and um, most of our families do not fit this. So usually a person is surrounded by family, and then the whole family, they're surrounded by community. But when we talk about families impacted by disability, um, the person is usually surrounded by services, but not everyone is eligible for services. So this model um, really excludes a lot of people. And while people are waiting for a waiver or to be qualified. So here in this picture, you have the person surrounded by services and then family and community. So the challenge of uh, uh, the Chart of the Life course is to talk about this model right here. So, um, we have the person, we have the family, and the community. But each little star represents uh, community opportunities for people to be included. And I'll go, I'll get into a specific of that. But um, so tonight, you know, uh, we're talking with um, Ashland Special Needs Ministry. They would have their own star because um, they serve the family and they serve the person and they serve in the community. So that star can go anywhere it wants to go, but it is part of the community, not services. Can you see the differences between those two? So this is the model that we need to go towards. Um, we, we can't wait for money to come available for waiver. We can't wait for uh, services that are not even thought of yet. Um, you know, we need to be proactive in how we can encourage each other and empower our families. So tonight, we're going to have a fun time talking about some short-term breaks from responsibilities. Um, 
And what I did is I put a little list here that we could work on, off of. And Christina is going to be um, sharing in a moment uh, a survey that she has been a part of. Um, but tonight we're thinking about respite in the home. What are some ideas for that? Uh, respite out of the home. Um, and I call that no touch respite, no face to face. You know, we have people who are medically fragile and cannot be around people, but there are still ways that we can serve people in a respite capacity. And then the out of the ordinary respite. So, ready to dig in? Shake of heads? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Christina, would you be willing to um, go ahead and talk about? Okay, and talk about um, the survey that you had been a part of. Sure. Just so some of you who don't know me, I know Francis. I know Janine. Hi. I don't know the others, but that's okay. So uh, we run a special needs ministry here in Ashland, Ohio, and this is my assistant director, Caitlin Hanshaw. And so uh, we were a part of a community organization here that did a um, a survey of moms who are impacted by special needs and what kind of respite would really impact them if they were allowed to participate in that or given the opportunity to have that. And so the moms shared that um, maybe it would be best if they could go and have a yoga class every week or a time with friends to have coffee or just time to do laundry on their own. Um, all of them decided that that was maybe, they just needed something that could allow them to help them get through the week in a better way that they, um, when they have a week that is totally just jam packed and full um, and they never get a break, never get a, a chance to just stop and think, which is kind of what your survey showed at the beginning, Deb, that mm -hmm. everybody wants to do something that they wanna do. Um, spend some time on that. These parents, these moms were sharing that if I could just choose the activity and somebody would then support us in that, then that would be a great way for them to find respite. Yes. Uh, I know as a family, I would have loved to have had respite, um, something, uh, might be preaching to the choir here, but uh, as a sibling, only one of my parents could go to my events because the mm -hmm. other one had to stay home because we couldn't find qualified um, child care. And we paid for everything. There is respite now where people get uh, some uh, waiver money but we kind of did it all. So my memories are seeing my dad at the football game, uh, my mom at another event. We were never together as a family. Yeah. So, all right, so let's go ahead and start with, what is our first thing on the list, uh, Don? Uh-oh, did we lose Don? I had yeah. to unmute. <laughs> Respite in the home. Okay, respite in the home. Do you want to start, Christina? Sure. So some of the things we do, and then I'm going to ask Janine to say too what might have helped when, that's Hannah in the background, she's waving. When Hannah was a child, what might have helped them um, as parents um, impacted by special needs? Um, and Hannah is very intelligent and Hannah probably could tell herself what would have helped her parents. Um, so uh, some of the things that we do is uh, we provide respite in the home, meaning ours is a free a service to anybody who asks for it, but we will go and um, depending on the age of the the individual uh, provide respite in the home, play with them, help with laundry, help with cooking, take meals. Um, if they can't do the laundry there, then I, we've been known to take the laundry to my house to do it or somewhere else just that they get a break. Um, in the home, we also will allow the mom to go take a nap while we watch the kids. In fact, one time, one of the little guys I was watching um, wanted his mom so badly, he went up and banged on the door, but she was so asleep. She did not hear any of that. She was just so thankful for the rest. And I was panicking and I'm pulling him by the legs going, come on, little guy, we're going to go, you know, and um, he was just pounding on the door. He didn't hear a thing. So um, sometimes it's just, that's what we do. Or if it, if in the home would be help, then we'll go with them to, uh, to the store, you know, like to help with the home things that they might need to get the groceries or um, whatever that looks like. But we also, um, we do a lot of things if they need to leave, then while they're gone, I usually take other people with me, volunteers who will help me clean and maybe get dinner ready or do something. So when the mom comes home or the, you know, the family comes home, they can actually have a family night, not focusing on all of that. Yes. 
Janine, what would you like to say that might have may, maybe would have helped you when you were? Um, I think maybe just having um, someone to talk with, mm -hmm. you know, just talk about maybe daily struggles or, you know, um, just, you know, behavioral issues or, you know, how do I, you know, and also make, yeah, just maybe give, um, but as far as respite, <laughs> um, maybe just, you know, um, having a Hannah have a different face. You know, yeah. A lot of kids don't have a don't get the invitations to the birthday parties and, and things like that. But just to have maybe that she could have had someone just do something, you know, with her um, that because she was always, you know, she was always with us, but rarely did she get to be with other people, you know, or do things with others. Yeah. I remember once I asked a, a mom how we can help her. She says, I've been needing my kitchen walls painted for 20 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. And all I do is I look at my walls and how bad they look. And, and it just reminds me, it just brings her down. So mm -hmm. you got people in there just to paint their walls. So mm -hmm. that was like a mental respite for her to not to see that one thing that was practical to do um, was done. Yeah, uh, we have one mom in particular that I can think of that the poor thing she will say to me, I have this list that I want to accomplish. And she has two little guys and Janine knows her and it is impossible for her to get mm -hmm. anything. And so when we go over, we try to accomplish everything. So she kind of gets a night off that, you know, even vacuuming, she'll vacuum and two seconds mm -hmm. later, they dump something and it's, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, one thing, you know, a lot of this is relationship-based because we need to mm -hmm. be very mindful of um, our children's sec uh, safety, uh, that kind of thing, which is so important. Um, one thing I thought of uh, for in-home is if a person has a medically fragile child, would you be willing to spend the night at their house so the other kids don't have to get out of bed and they can get up for school in the morning so there's not mm -hmm. that hiccup of bringing everybody to your house. You know, it's just sleep on the couch and just be there uh, when the kids wake up. Um, that's the one thing that uh, I have on my, on my list. Um, I want to share with you that we talked with a lady um, she contacted us through our website and we talked to her last week and she was sharing with us that um, they adopted a little guy and uh, he has special needs and now he's an adult and she realizes how how much respite would have impacted them in the home and so she mm. said that they are actually they live in Medina and they are actually adding on to their home uh, a, a, like a sensory room two extra bedrooms and like a common area so that um, they can now host or be a provider for overnight mm. families because they realized how much they, sometimes you just need a good night's rest, or sometimes you just need to spend time with the siblings and maybe let them have a little social time on their own, whatever mm -hmm. that looks like for a family. Um, she said that really has impacted her. So she was asking us what we thought and how she should do things. And we were like, we just want to know when you're open. <laughs> <We'll come. laughs> Sounds amazing. Yeah, because yeah. I don't think that's not a, an available thing in some place where you know that a, a parent understands and that it's a safe environment and she's going through all the steps to make it safe and, mm -hmm. you know, to make it geared toward those with special needs, not just like, oh, here's a room that we can keep you in, but they're going to have a sensory place. I mean, every. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. You, you know, you brought up one other thing about sleeping overnight. Would you be willing to um, sleep on the couch while? The caregiver is sleeping and let them sleep so just kind of what you mentioned in the beginning let them sleep in their own home their own bed and know that they're you know all the locks are done and the kids safe uh, so you know there's safety in knowing someone else is in charge for the moment there is let me let me show i said that i would share this a little bit but we were guardians for a man with down syndrome for 20 years and so when we would go on vacations oh. and things he would you know um 
we were always worried about him eloping or, you know, cause he would just find, and as he got older and dementia set in, he um, lived till he was 69. We actually went to Disney and he found his way out of our hotel room while we were all sleeping. So I feel like that's a real fear for a lot of our parents mm-hmm. and they never fully sleep, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? And so I think that's something that I would love to start being able to provide is helping parents, you know, let's go for a, a sleepover, however that works. That, uh, <laughs> you know. Now, I will tell you, one of our families, um, for like for Johnny and Friends, a camp, a family retreat camp in the summer, we do take one of our volunt- one of our kiddos um, for the parents because they can't go. So I take him for a whole week and I do stay oh. with him in the hotel. So we're willing to do it. It's just... Um, making sure everybody's safe and covered and, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, one of you don't mind putting in the Johnny and Friends web uh, address in the chat. That would be great. Um, just as an FYI for those who may not be familiar with Johnny and Friends, that J-O-N-I, the word and friends, plural, uh, is a Christian international disability ministry that has these wonderful family retreats across the country. And uh, it's like five days of... Uh, a break from everyday responsibilities. The families can come together, and um, and at nighttime, the child or adult, the teen, goes back with their parents or their caregivers overnight. And what is the amazing thing is, it is the best training ground for inclusion um, for people who are interested in um, uh, including people with disabilities in their church or wherever they are, um, they learn, uh, they're, they're uh, trained right before the families come. And it's just a fun day where at uh, lunch and breakfast and dinner, they have their volunteer who is with their person. And the parents can have a hot cup of coffee and actually finish a hot, hot cup of coffee in the morning. Um, plus, there's other activities throughout the day. And honestly, it's a taste of heaven. Uh, anyone who's been on it, and I think I've been to, I think I've done like 20 uh, family retreats in my, my uh, history there. So I just wanted to bring that up. Okay, so I want to um, talk about, uh, and we'll probably be bouncing. All right, so I thought of, uh, let's talk about outside the home. Um, one thing I thought of, that, uh, you know, as a kid, whenever my brother had therapy, we all had to go. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we're sitting in the lobby and, you know, trying not to drive our mom crazy and get yelled at a lot. But, you know, if you're a neighbor and they have kids and you have kids, would you be willing to have that typical kids come stay with you? That way they're not in the waiting room. They're, they're playing or they're doing homework, whatever, in a safe environment, um, which would, I think would take off um, a little of the edge uh, on, the, on the caregiver, mom, dad. Um, that's one thing I was thinking of. And um, can, you, can you think of, let's talk about outside the home. What are some thoughts? Um, so for us, outside the home looks a little different. We provide a respite program two times a month that the families, the whole family can come to. So then that um, gives the parents a break at least for three hours, two times a month that they can actually do something or go on a date or go home and take a nap or go to the grocery store. Like we had a family come that has twins and they cried because they said, this is the first time we're going to the grocery store in 14 years by ourselves. And you know, for those of us who have done that, you kind of are like, that seems almost impossible that you've not gotten to the grocery store. But if once you get involved with families impacted by special needs, it isn't impossible. And so um, the other thing that we do for outside the home is uh, we provide gift cards, families, like, so if they're like, if the mom does call and say, can I, could you maybe help me in the home? Then probably, you know, if they go out, sometimes they've spent all of their resources on everything in the home and for their kids. And so sometimes it's as simple as a $10 gift card to Starbucks or whatever it is that allows them to kind of relax. Uh, The other thing is we, we take our families to appointments if needed um, and support our, our parents in the appointments. And then if they would rather us stay with their typical kids, we'll stay with the typical kids, you know, it just, 
So I think those are all ideas that can help outside the home that would make, um, and even like I said earlier, outside the home can be as simple as um, having somebody come to do their yard work for them. Like get a bunch of volunteers or get a somebody, or we have families who, um, I know one in particular, another family hired a service to do their yard work because they couldn't get it done. Oh. And then we took a youth group over and did another yard because we just couldn't get, um, this poor family just didn't have time to do it. So um, those are just some things outside the home. Janine, yeah. what was, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, Janine, is there anything that would have helped you when Hannah was growing up outside the home that would have? Um, prob probably um, I don't, you know, we just did it ourselves. We, yeah. You know, I don't think, I. it's hard for me to think just because we just tried to, you know, to make do it things ourselves, you know, <laughs> and we all went to doctor's appointments and therapy and, you know, um, we would all jam in a, ho a hospital room, you know, exam room together and um, so probably just being, you know, doing something with our uh, typicals maybe while we, you know, like you, like uh, you said about when you have to go to appointments and, and having someone stay with your typical so they don't have to drag along to everything. And um, I, I think too, um, our typicals got to participate in a lot of things sports wise that didn't have Hannah didn't have those opportunities and it would have been nice you know that it was before upward um I know upwards fairly inclusive program um but just having different activities that Hannah could have engaged in outside of the home she was more of a, a observer a lot of times mm. Um, yeah. And I think too, not that you have to be her support there, that maybe somebody could step in and be her support instead yeah. of you, you could be in the crowd because yes. we've done that. Like, um, we have a young girl who, um, is a cheerleader now. Well, she's not young. She's not, she's 19, but anyway, yeah. she, um, she was on my upward cheer squad because mom knew she could be with me and yeah. she wouldn't have to be right on top of her. I could help her and support her and love her. And, um, so yeah. I think that's yeah. another way, Janine, that's yeah. a great idea because so many kids can't participate in mm -hmm. activities that are what typical siblings do. So if you could, if we could help yep. them find a way to be inside the home participating with support. Yeah. yeah. And church too, you know, there, yeah. especially during youth group time, that, that time of uh, Hannah's life, having someone and I remember asking for that, you know, could there be someone that would help her engage in youth group and church, you know, because I couldn't follow her around at youth group, you know, no. and I, I, we just needed somebody that wanted to step up to that, you know, uh, role and help her to engage youth group in a way that was, uh, gave, was dignified to her or gave her dignity, you know, and, and opportunity. I want to add on top of that, um, uh, when there, at some of the family retreats that I served at, there were youth groups that came as a team uh, to, to uh, serve together. And what a blessing that is, first of all, as a family member uh, impacted by disability when someone chooses to be with us is a, mm -hmm. a blessing. But that's such a great training place for um, things to happen, whether, you know, heart change happens at youth mm -hmm. family retreat and then the the, they get it into the church, um, mm -hmm. but it's it was really cool that there were a bunch of students that got older and were in in leading positions at family retreat. So um, I wanted um, I'm going to keep this going because I want to get all the ideas. Uh, Miss Dawn has offered to type in all the things we're talking about, so I can give you that list once we're done with tonight. Um, I thought of another in home. Um, make a meal with throwaway containers, plastic silverware. Um, that was one thing I thought about. Um, uh, gift cards, of course, for food gift cards for date night or even just for nights you don't want to cook. Um, 
and you know as you build relationships um you can ask someone can you train me how to be with this per you know the person that we want to serve um i think the more relationship building the more people are going to say yes as as and not be so freaked out and it may be a matter of them just being mentored what being mm -hmm. with you and watching um and that's kind of how uh, the training was at Johnny and Friends. You, we learned to watch how the parents work, and we uh, followed suit. Um, another out of the home, I thought about um, filling the tank of gas, uh, clean the inside of their vehicle. Um, you know, another thing is, is safely washing wheelchairs. Because um, every time a mom looks at a dirty wheelchair, it's like, oh, one more thing for me to do. So that's just a, a different kind of thing to to uh, talk about. Think of something, we've Christina. Done all those. Well, we've done all those, Deb, because um, we, like if we're at the home and we see that that's just a need, uh, we just try to step in. Or uh, if I'm riding with the family, I'll be like, hey, well, I'll, how about I drive or you drive and I'll clean the car while we're driving or, <laughs> you know, it's just. It's so hard when you have a child with special needs and you're going from mm -hmm. appointment to appointment and you're doing all these things. And some of our families, um, we have one that is impacted by three children with autism and we have um, another that has two with autism. And um, I think, you know, like in Hannah's situation, she had two siblings that were amazing siblings to her mm -hmm. and mom and dad that, you know, um, but not all of our families have that. And some mm -hmm. of them really, it's it's disability day in, day out from the morning, mm -hmm. you, from the time you get up till the time you don't sleep. Mm -hmm. So I think whenever we can help in any way, um, actually, we sometimes just see a need and they don't even know it's a need and we do it. And mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. that way it gets a little better for them. All right. So um, I want to share about one outreach that I um, help support. Uh, a church found out that uh, there was special needs ice skating lessons at the local ice skating rink. And, of course, the siblings are there waiting, you know, in the cold. <laughs> so I suggested them getting board games and other quick games and get some youth together and provide little stations of different things in the room where, or in the area that they sit waiting for their um, brother or sister to finish their lesson. Um, and then another thing that we did outside of church, we, we had a board room. And that's not B-O-R-E-D, it's B-O-A-R-D room. And it was served as a, a mini respite. We did it uh, quarterly and we started at six. We would provide the meal um, and then uh, shoe the parents out, encourage them to do what they want to do. And we would just play games, karaoke, those kind of things. It gave, and that was a, a mixed group of people. That was not just people with disabilities. That was even siblings as well. So that was a really fun thing to do. And, and it's very doable um, if you're thinking about doing something. And we actually did it on the campus of the church. We had, uh, uh, okay, so let's see. This is fun. This is fun, isn't it? Okay, so let's talk about no touch uh, uh, respite. Um, I talked to a mom yesterday, and she has two children with disabilities and no support at home. And um, just taking the time to make a phone call uh, mm -hmm. to say, "Hey, I haven't seen you," or um, and allowing that person. First of all, the confidentiality of what they're talking about. And then, um, you know, how we can um, listen and let them vent. And, you know, no holds bar of whatever they want to talk about. Um, you may be the only person they've talked to all week. So um, that was one thing. And then checking in by text or email. You know, sometimes a text is all they need. I you know, send a funny TikTok to them. I do that a lot of times because that's my therapy for me, uh, especially humorous things. Um, sending anonymous cards. When you know a family's struggling, just sending them a card and leaving, don't say who it is. Um, and I'm bringing this up because that was it was personal and it has nothing to do with respite except comfort. When we lost our daughter, um, we had a lady named Debbie send us a card for a full year every Friday. 
we received a card from Debbie to encourage us. I have never met her to this day, and that was 16 years ago. So there's power of, you know, whether you, you know, maybe you, you're too ill yourself to serve somebody or you, you have limitate, your own limitation. There are things that you can do that, that non-touch or face-to-face. -face. Um, buy the Audible app. Um, you know, some people cannot read a book. <laughs> Just not going to happen, but maybe they can listen to a book um, while uh, they're taking their, their time. So I'm going to jump in here real quick and tell one. Is that okay? Yeah. So one of the non-face-to-face um, -face things, it's kind of is face-to-face, -face, but not really. Um, so uh, a couple of our families, their kiddos and their adults will call and FaceTime me. And the parent can go take a break while the child is FaceTiming me or talking with me. And then to share a cute little story is um, one of our little guys. <laughs> He calls uh, my my daughter, and for about an hour at night, sometimes she will entertain him while his mom kind of takes a break, and so um, on Facetime. And I think that using technology, and um, I read a I read a book on Facebook a couple well during COVID, and one of our families says that their child sits and he's an adult now will sit and listen to me read that book over and over again. So there's some things with technology that. I don't have to be face to face, but you can just do them and love them in a different way and provide respite. The mom can be in the room, but knows that the child is on the phone. Yep. And how often do our kids with special needs get phone calls? Rarely, rarely. We, we do that with my nephews. Um, she'll put them at the kitchen table. So while she's doing dishes and cleaning up, I'll talk to them about their day and you know what are they doing well, they're showing me their puzzles you know and all the i'm keeping them their attention right. on me so she's behind them doing what she needs to do without them being underfoot yeah definitely it's so, so important um for that okay so um some other, other not go ahead. sorry go ahead deb sorry there's a little bit go of a delay there's another one that I wanted to recommend to you, and it's um, it's called Soar uh, Respite. And if you look it up online, then that is a, a group of people, and they're in Kansas City, and they will they do online respite, meaning your child can log in, and then there's activities that they provide. They tell you all the things to do, and it's like an hour. And so I think that's that could be something that people could utilize. You know, I agree. During the pandemic, um, I mean, you know, God can use something really hard and do something really good out of it. Um, a lot of our families cannot make small group during the week for at their church, and so um, having a, you know using uh, Zoom for a meeting will allow a family who may not be able to come to church actually connect because maybe they can't find someone to take care of their person at home um, or they can't get away at least somehow they can get somewhat connected um, uh, yeah okay all right keep throwing your ideas you have any more janine do you have any Or Barb. Barb uh, train uh, did the training last week mm -hmm. on um, relations and how to help families um, take the time to identify, maybe even using a schedule when respite would be helpful. Because mm -hmm. I think people really want to help, but just don't know how. So I'm also thinking, well, if they don't have time to right, look, create a schedule and look at it, maybe you could provide that respite, watch the kids while he or she does that. So, um, And I think lots of our families don't know, they, they don't want to ask for help and they don't want to, um, then they don't realize they're in crisis mode and they need a break until that hits. And then yeah. they, they've not planned for respite. And so that was one of the reasons we did what we did in our community, because I knew that families needed that desperately. And um, if they know it's coming, that may get them through the week. And some of our kids even go yeah. to, the, to the refrigerator and say, respite, 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 because they know <laughs> it's coming. And so I think they all get to look forward to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anna, did you just shrug your shoulders? <laughs> no. 
Okay. <laughs> it was like, we love you at respite. You're our, you're our in-house writer. I think actually she was agreeing with you as I saw oh, her. You know, yeah. 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 Okay. Good girl. Good girl. Uh, we have uh, Francis. Hi, Francis and Jenny. Do you have some ideas that you've heard or done to provide um, respite support? Nothing. Nothing offhand that I can think of. All right, so um, so so let's talk about the safety component. Um, you know, how can any suggestions on how families can think about uh, navigating? meeting someone new and vetting them or anything like that. Do you do that, Christina, at your respite? Sure. So all of our respite providers have to be background checked. And a lot of them are volunteers that have jobs in another location. And so they are already background checked. Mm -hmm. um, and we have education students from Ashland University come and participate. And they're all background checked. And if you're 18 and older, you have to be, we vet you. And I, yeah. and I actually call references and I check and we say, is this somebody you would recommend that could work with our kids with and adults with special needs? Um, we try to provide the safest environment because honestly, if somebody did something, I would take them out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I just feel really strongly about that. And we mm -hmm. also have a rule that you are never to be alone with a person, uh, an individual with special needs. So we have a two to one rule at all times. Um, and that can be hard when you're asking for respite in the home, right? Mm -hmm. You only have yeah. one volunteer. So in that case, then you better vet carefully who you're, who you're allowing to be in your, in your home. So um, that's why I think our families have, uh, and we are busy. Like we have a lot of families who ask for help because I think they know they can trust us and we've proven to them that they're, we're there to love them and to keep them safe in all cases. Mm -hmm. But it also goes to training too. Like, um, you can have some really good people with great hearts who want to provide respite, but if you have a medically fragile child or you have a child with specific behaviors that, uh, you know, tend to come out when somebody new is there <laughs> or even not, um, and it, we have some volunteers who have come and then chosen this is not for them because they're mm -hmm. not sure what to expect. So we train all of our volunteers and try to give them a good look at, you know, what it looks like and, um, and then we're there to support. So like if some of our volunteers actually wanted to go provide respite, we would go with them to make sure that they're okay. Yeah, I used to work in a hospital and we had special training just to help someone in and out of a chair mm -hmm. or to roll over j just everything. Yeah. And cause yeah, you'd be surprised at how easy it is to hurt someone yeah. just rolling them over the wrong way. Right. And the medically fragile kids need, um, some of them need their trach suction. Some of them need uh, their feeding tubes cleaned out, you know, just things like that, that, you know, once you're trained, you can do it and do it safely. But if you were just left to your own devices, that would not be good. <laughs> yeah. And that goes to another point, um, you know, the giving of medicine. So, you know, I, I think a family needs to think about if there's certain areas of a time where they need respite to try to avoid maybe when medicine is given out or special feedings. I mean, you know, it's really a lot to ask a family <laughs> to figure out when you want to be helped. But, um, you know, I think that they can think, oh, yeah, that's not a good time. And um, and then if they're in the building of the relationships, if they mentor, let the person see, how do you do this? Let them do it. And and not just give them a one shot, shot uh, training and then say, thanks a lot and out of there. Um, that That's not a safe thing. Well, and two, um, one thing that we kind of stress and I tell our siblings when they come to our respite that this is their night off. We don't want them to get involved or help us in any way that we'll figure it out because I think too, when you provide respite, those siblings have been caretakers their whole lives and they just they automatically step into that role, even when you want them to take a break. Yeah. And so we try to remind them, um, you know, it's okay to just be a kid tonight or just be here and hang out and not think about this. Go away. Just walk. So that's what we tell them. So um, I think that that's 
important for respite volunteers to know too, to help um, those who want to come, that the siblings need a, need a break too. Yeah, that's do so have, important. Do you have meetings with families when it's like that? To, you know, to get to know them because even the siblings need to trust you. Yeah, so all of our families come <laughs> to our respite program. And so um, when they're there, they, they see the two of us for sure. And um, like Janine volunteers now because uh, we need her uh, American Sign Language skills. And so, um, so the family, the whole family comes and the parents leave and the siblings get used to us and know who we are. Go ahead, Deb, it's okay. So that's how we take care of the siblings and then they get to know us and trust us. And, um, and then we also, I have a long talk with a parent before we ever invite a parent to rest it about the needs and yeah, about all the needs that need to be covered. And um, even if the siblings have some issues that need to be covered too, like how do we love your siblings the best way possible? So that's really what we do. But um, Janine, did you ever have any moments of safety issues that you were worried about with Hannah? Like with people? Like yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, we totally were, you know, we've always been like, we wouldn't just leave her with anybody, you know, that we wanted to make sure that who, who she was with was a safe person. And especially someone we knew, you know, we felt like the, the more we knew someone, the, the more safe we felt. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> That, that's really that's so important to make sure and hannah is very verbal and feisty yeah. she we're at, they're actually having a self-defense class at oh the good oh, i'm taking it but you need to go get a yoga mat still oh, oh yes go get a yoga mat hannah yeah. <laughs> yeah. and that's, i that's part of it, it too making sure your child um, you know is is like with hannah we can make sure that she's in um oh has an awareness too of being safe and yes yes but you know some of our kids can't even do yeah. that can't do that you know that because yeah. you know our yeah. kids. and so yeah. um, uh trying to make sure people understand their boundaries too some volunteers don't understand their boundaries like yeah like they and shouldn't do and like we don't right. give meds at respite. We don't do that. And so mm -hmm. um, the parents know that, that we're not going to give medication. So, yeah. but some volunteers might think, oh, that's fine. I can do that. Well, that's yeah. not necessarily a safe area to venture into. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thanks, Christina, for covering. <laughs> oh, I, you're fine. I totally understand. We came to my parents' house because my dog would be going nuts. Uh, so we yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah it's okay yeah you know i i just want to that underline and this is my own personal experience but not you know good. not having my parents support me you know I, I missed uh, up i missed having their input and their encouragement that kind of mm -hmm. thing you know um and i don't think my mother ever saw me cheerlead or uh, do gymnastics, uh, those kind of things. And, you know, uh, and I think of the rest that my dad would give my father, uh, would give my mom with my brother, we would go to a playground and my brother loved to be pushed on a swing. And my memory of spending time with my dad is pushing the swing the whole time. So, you know, sometimes that respite um, can come in a different way. I don't know. Um, I know the, fa the fathers need respite. you have any thoughts on what fathers like for respite? Hey. I was muted, sorry. Um, we did a, a Johnny and Friends thing recently where our dads got together and they all um, met at an axe throwing place. All right. And they did that and they got to talk and they got to, and my husband actually went as the like devotional speaker and just kind of encourage her. And, um, and Janine's husband was supposed to go, but they had a new baby in the family. So, um, but it, uh, what we learned from that is that 
the dads truly needed to kind of share and talk that, you know, they, uh, we all experience disability in a different way. And we all experience our kids in a different way, moms and dads. And so I think that um, the dads were just sharing that they just needed some more camaraderie, like guys that they could just hang out with. And maybe they didn't even have to talk about disability. They just wanted to, to hang out and have some time because I think that becomes a lonely place. You as a couple or you as a, and then we literally just talked to um, some of our moms and Caitlin and I uh, today were even hashing out that we want to do a, a retreat just for our moms where we take look like, Janine's like, yes, let's go. Yeah. And so we're already planning it because we just want to, um, we have a lot of single moms too. In yes. our and so then we have to think, okay, how do we cover them to be able to go to a retreat? What would that look like? Um, and so, but being a single mom, being a married mom, there are still days that you feel like everything relies on you and your shoulder, you know, you're carrying it all. Yes. And so um, we, we just feel like that would be really important if we could love them, you know, because supporting the family means not just the kids, you got to help the parents to feel like they're loved and cared for because I'm terrible at this. I tell my volunteers, when the families come in from the car for our respite or whenever we see them, don't forget there's a family behind them. Like we focus on the child with special needs and we're like, ah, I need you, come here, you know. Yeah. And forget that there's a mom and a dad and the siblings that that's all they hear all the time is, oh, you're so cute. Oh, you're, you know, whatever it is. Or you're Mary's mom or <laughs> yes, yes. John dad. Yeah, they want to be, they want to go back to being, I'm Janine, I'm Christina, I'm Caitlin, whoever it is. Um, and so we've, we've just determined that we want to love our parents that way. Yeah. You know, I think of um, the one chart in the life tool, it's called the trajectory. And we all know what a tra trajectory is, but, you know, the goal is what is a good life. And, mm -hmm. and we know what we don't want. So it takes planning to get to that good life. And, I, I, you know, I think it's really cool if we could challenge uh, parents and caregivers. What, what did you dream about before? What are some things that you've always wanted to do? And just kind of encourage them to, to either um, ignite that old uh, dream or um, encourage them to try something different. And that, again, could be supported by that respite period of time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I think I covered a lot of what um, we had written down. Does anyone else have any more ideas they want to share? Excuse me. Hannah, do you have anything you want to share? What do you think would have been, what would have been good for your parents for respite? <laughs> um... Probably a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you, a long time. A long time. A long time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What going, you out say, on a date, going out on a date. Yeah. Yeah. What is that, right? Yeah. What? <laughs> That's good, Hannah. Yeah, because you know what, Janine comes and serves in our respite. She doesn't even get that. Oh, Janine. You yeah, need so it. I, I remember dropping Hannah for respite um, last year, and um, my husband and I are like, "What are we gonna do with ourselves? <laughs> we, we didn't even know what to do." Yeah, yes. you know, we're like, "I'm not sure what we're gonna do here." Now, and tell them how Hannah, how old are you? I am thirty. Yeah, so that's thirty years. Thirty years, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. think that through. And Hannah is. Um, brilliant and she's amazing and she's but still Hannah where mm -hmm. do you live I live with my parents yeah mm -hmm. and so you are with your mom and dad all the time aren't you yes yes, yes. we always say Hannah needs respite yes, yes. from yes. us yes. <laughs> and you know what I that's say, true I, it is I true. say that with our families yeah. I'll say this one needs respite just as much as his mom does, or this one needs respite. You know, I think that's so true because yeah, listen, I, 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 think, I think people forget that typical sibs or typical sibs will grow up and leave and mm -hmm. that 
and they have social circles and they have all these things. So part of what our respite program is too, provides a social circle for them a couple of times a month yeah. where they get to hang out and be with people their age. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, once you get out of school age children, like mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's yeah. very frustrating for families. So providing that respite where it could be even be, um, Hannah, we want to plan this too, where we take the adult women bowling and we just hang out, you know, or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, did you say, oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> I had a little burp. No. Oh, okay. I thought it was about the bowling. No. Uh, and Chris, Christina, yeah. um, when you were talking about the dads doing the axe throwing, yeah. was that scheduled at another time, not during your respite? It was, it was on a Friday night and it um, happened before our respite had even started this year. And so, um, and we've, we've already got it planned next year. And the dads are really cute because they all got together and they were talking about how um, they loved this ax throwing thing. And they thought, oh, we'll do it again next year. But the guys were like, no, 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 no. We want to go to Top Golf. We yeah. have, like they had a plan in their mind. Like if we're going to get to do this, we want to do what we want to do. So. I love yeah. Top Golf. <laughs> <laughs> so, I Please, please provided. Yeah. Did you, did you hear that, Deb? <clears throat> and for one of the families, we provided respite so that the dad could go. Yeah. Yes. That's so that's so important. Um, I think the one thing I loved at Johnny and Friends is when they had the dad's group. And all I thought of, I wish my dad had an opportunity to get away from the world for five days and actually meet other fathers that are walking on a similar journey. My father never had a friend that was walking on a similar journey. And mm -hmm. that makes me so sad to think of. Um, so it's really important for um, everyone at home. Yeah. So I'm going to say, Christina, I, would you mind telling about what you're going to be talking about next week? Sure. So... Uh, I think the two ladies who are on here who don't who know me know already. But anyway, um, so I am the executive director of Ashton Special Needs Ministry, and we provide a community-based respite program that is truly one of it one of a kind. Um, that if you look it up, you'll see some other respites that are provided through churches and things. And we do meet in churches. However, all of our um, volunteers and all of our um, the things that we do are community-based, meaning the community supports what we do. So uh, we're going to talk about that, and I'm going to talk about how that impacts our families and what a difference that makes and um, how that you can start one in your area and get it going and uh, make a difference through respite in the lives of those impacted by special needs. Well, that will be a wonderful uh, follow-up from tonight. Um, does anybody have anything else they want to share? Well, if not, um, I think we covered what we came for is a, uh, a bunch of ideas and and um, this video will be edited and I will send you the links of, of it. And uh, Miss Dawn said she's going to type up the ideas that were presented tonight and we will share that. And so I'm going to say thank you so much, um, Christina and Caitlin, for um, coming tonight. Uh, and sharing your passion and what you see as a result of the power of respite. Uh, and thanks to everybody who joined us tonight. Um, if you want to learn more about the Center for Disability Empowerment or Ashton Special Needs Ministry, uh, feel free to email me. Um, and I do hope, now I'm going to try this. I've never done it before, so let's see. Good luck to me, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. One second. I'm hoping I don't cancel out on everybody here. Um, I'm going to send a um, survey um, to you. It's just some quick questions, and I need it just for um, for our grant um, purposes. So thank you all for joining us tonight, and have a great, this is Wednesday, have a great rest of the week and weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Christina and Caitlin. You're welcome. Is the survey coming on email? Yeah.
Okay. Okay. I just want to make sure. I thought maybe it was popping up on the screen. Like, no. I, 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 well, 